Yeah, so Joel, I'm 47 years of age. I worked for 20 years in what I'd call corporate retail, lots of different companies. I worked for Shell, uh, I worked for Caltex, um, a lot of stuff in the fuel industry. Worked for United for a short period of time uh, for Coles. I was general manager at Kathmandu for four and a half to five years. Uh, head of retail and apparel company, so lots of different things before I made my way to Jim's group. Look, Joel, I was very lucky enough to work uh, for Jim personally for two and a half years um, in his uh, in the head office team uh, as the general manager of operations and sales. I, it was a, just a wonderful opportunity for me to stand back and look at the brand. I, I just I think the brand really resonates. Uh, the mowing brand, over two thousand franchisees. Um, I'm not super creative, so I, I toyed with the idea of building a division from the ground up, but I wanted something with huge brand recognition, and look, there is nothing bigger than the mowing division. I started in my role as franchisor uh, in around February 2021, so I've been at it now for about three years. We've really built the region. Uh, started with around 43 franchisees, we're now up to 72, uh, soon to be 73. Um, we've got a wonderful group of franchisees. I talk to them at least every fortnight, uh, everyone's busy, we work hard together to create work outside of just the normal work, whether it's commercial work, contract work, work through councils, but the region is pretty much founded upon uh, honesty, integrity and communication. Um, the franchisees communicate well with me and I try to do the same with them. Yeah, good question. So the way the pay for work guarantee works uh, is it's done over a four week period as an average. Uh, so let's just say your pay for work guarantee is 2,500 a week. If you earn $3,000 in week one, two and three per week, uh, and you earn $2,200 in week four, you can't claim it for week four. So it's done as an average over the four weeks. And effectively, it is a, it's, uh, it's an income stream to top up franchisees. So the way that it works is if you've earned $2,000 by Friday morning, um, you've got an opportunity. No one's telling you what you have to do. You run your own business. If you want to go and play golf on Friday afternoon, Saturday and Sunday, you're welcome to. But you have the opportunity to go out and offer a free service for $65 an hour for one hour per customer. So in principle, if you do six free services, six six is a 36, that's $390, you'll be topped up from your 2000 for the $390 to $2,390 to a maximum if your pay for work is 2,500 per week to $2,500. So the way, you know, the, the way that splits work is every franchisee has an opportunity to do a split. So they buy a territory. Um, it might be a certain portion, say, of a place like Ballarat. Uh, once they've built it up to a certain level, they have the opportunity to approach their franchisor. They'll sit down with their franchisor and they can either do a client sale, which is just clients, and franchisees get 100% of the income from those client sales if it's just a specific client sale. But if they want to sell part of their territory and clients, that is referred to as a split and the franchisee gets 80% of that income and the franchisor assists assist them with uh, making that sale. It gives uh, franchisees an opportunity to make back a significant portion uh, of their upfront costs uh, during their journey. And we've got franchisees across the business that sometimes have sold two, three and four splits. So um, there is contract work available. It differs, it differs by region, but I can only talk to Western Victoria. So yes, we have built relationships with um, different councils like Mildura Council, Warrnambool Council. Um, we operate uh, through private companies like Gen U, which is aged care. I work closely with uh, Ben Ward down in Geelong, who manages a company called Integrated Living, where we get a significant amount of work through them. Um, and then I also manage a commercial company. Um, I do work uh, across multiple divisions, not just the mowing division, and that brings in significant income, and we just hand that work out as we see fit to franchisees. So what makes a good franchisee? Someone who's proactive, accept the fact that you are running your own business, and that business is solely reliant on you. There is no one else in the team. In my business, there is me personally. There's nobody else to support me. So you have to be proactive if you're going to run your own business. Uh, it's a wonderful environment where you get out of it what you put into it and the money goes in your pocket. It's flexible if you've got family and children. It gives you a wonderful work-life balance if you're a franchisee. Um, you have to be honest, have good integrity. You have to have wonderful communication skills as a franchisee. Um, again, how you relate to your clients, how you engage with your clients, simple things like leaving the business cards, doing a few little extras for them, that will help you build your business over time. So really strong communication skills. Um, you have to be realistic. Um, you're not going to make a million dollars in your first year. I'll be honest, that's how I see things. Um, so if you come in and you are patient and you want to grow a business and build a business, you can build a wonderful business over a short to medium period of time. Look, there is always going to be a market for independence. Um, I, I look after places like Shepparton, um, Bendigo, Ballarat, Mildura, Warrnambool. There's always going to be a market for independence. Um, it suits certain people who probably... Um, 
want to have a smaller business and just do things as they see fit when they want. Um, look, the, 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 the beauty of gyms, as I said, is there is over 2,000 franchisees in the mowing division. It's a nationally recognised brand. People believe in it. People support it. It's been around for circa 40 years now. Um, and it's just wonderful strength. If you want to go to do commercial work, uh, e.g. like councils or commercial work with retailers, uh, to simply have the strength of Jim's brand behind you and knowing uh, those clients, knowing that you're police checked and you've got insurance and that you have the strength of the, be- the brand behind you, um, it, yeah, is second to none. Again, I can only talk to my region, but yes, we have we support people. Um, we had a, a gentleman in my group that had a medical episode uh, pre Christmas, and everyone in the town got behind him in the in within the group and made sure that his clients were looked after. So yes, that can certainly happen. Yeah. So the the focus for me is that we have uh, regional meetings. So uh, we have at least eight regional meetings a year, uh, given the uh, complexity in my region and the geographic span. A lot of those are done largely through Zoom. We do have catch ups as group individually. So I might go to Bendigo and have a catch up with the Bendigo guys, and I might go to uh, Ballarat and have a catch up with the Ballarat guys. But that's secondary to the the regional meetings. Um, it's a good training program. Once the training's finished on site for new franchisees, um, there is a 10 to 13 week training program uh, that new franchisees will undertake as well. Um, and just as I said, under the franchise model, we need to communicate with our franchisees once a month. Uh, as a minimum, I talk to my franchisees every fortnight just to make sure that they're you know, on the right track and, and being supported. Good question. So in Western Victoria, I've paid around about $900 in pay for work guarantee in three years. Uh, and I reckon I've put on close to uh, 35 to 40 franchisees, including resales and splits. So yeah, we've got in the vicinity of 35 to 40 new franchisees in three years, and I've paid a grand total of probably seven to $900 worth of pay for work in that time. So it's minuscule, that's how much work there is available. I have had two females working for me. One of them has moved on. I have one female that works for me, Sharon. I'm sure she's happy that I mentioned her name. She's up in Bendigo, does an absolutely outstanding job, runs a robust, strong business. She's probably been with me now for about 18 months. Uh, Again, honest, upfront, uh, real quality work, and yet running an extremely successful business. I'd love to get more females involved in the brand. Yeah, look, I mean, there's certainly some common themes there. Um, it's an opportunity, I always say to people, Jim's mowing is an opportunity to earn really good income, but also it gives you super flexibility around if you've got a wife, uh, if you've got children. Um, you know, the benefits of running your own business versus being an employee. Um, I remember our chief operating officer rang me about 18 months ago when I moved into this role. I moved pretty quickly into this role, so I didn't have a lot of time to think about what the benefits were going to be. And I clearly pointed out two things to him. One is, I love the fact, and my franchisees love the fact, the harder you work, the more money you put in your own pocket. Uh, And I've had previous roles where I've worked and I've been fly in, fly out for two and a half years to Sydney. So every Monday morning, I'd get up and fly to Sydney at 6 a.m. And every Friday, I'd fly back to Melbourne at six o'clock on a Friday night. Um, That flexibility. I'm more heavily engaged with my children now than I probably ever have been previously in their lives. Ah, It's the best best decision I've ever made. I wish I'd made this decision 10 years ago. Uh, Financially, it's been wonderful. Uh, and I, 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 I'm big on numbers and I'm big on people and they're really two of the major things that I do. I communicate and talk with guys and it's all about numbers. So um, I, I wish I'd made the move 10 years ago and known about this 10 years ago. It's a good question. So I talk to people, new franchisees and also potential franchisors and the way that I talk to people is I say it can be as big or as small as you want it to do. Right now, um, make no mistake, I work very hard and I work long hours but that's by choice. There'd be plenty of franchisors out there that would choose not to do that. Um, I'm, by my standards, making a very good income. Uh, But yes, I do work hard for that, but I'm okay for that. But to your point, I don't have to travel to Sydney every week. I don't have to travel to Sydney and then do seven flights around Australia over the next two weeks to Perth, Western, you know, to Perth, to Queensland, etc. So yes, there is a lot to do. Uh, but I enjoy that. And again, I'm local. So my daughter started a new school today. I can go and see her this afternoon. My son's just started a new job and he's got his license. Um, he lives with me full time now. So I can engage with him on a, on a daily basis. I never used to be able to do that. So it can be as big or as small as you want it to be when you're running your own business and the decision is yours. Yeah, franchise level, the training's comprehensive. Um, I was involved with the training for a, a little bit of time there supporting Jim. Uh, so effectively, the way it works is most franchisees will come down on a Sunday afternoon to national office. They'll stay on Sunday night and the training kicks off on Monday morning. So effectively, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is what we would call generic training. It's quite comprehensive. You might be in a room with mowing people, cleaning people, fencing people. 
and then the Thursday, Friday, Saturday is pure what we'd call mowing training, and that finishes around about three o'clock on the Saturday afternoon. And as I discussed before, there is a 13-week online training module that follows post the training, so the training's very comprehensive. In my region, I generally have a mentor as well. One of the senior franchisees will mentor uh, be paid a, a, a figure and they'll support the new franchisee as a mentor moving forward. So not only have they got me there as a franchisor to support them, uh, they'll have a senior franchisee to have their back as well. Look, it's hard to put a number on it, but uh, at the end of the day, as I said, we've got an unprecedented number of franchisees right now looking to do splits in multiple locations, and I'd be happy to talk to anyone from Western Victoria about those locations. Um, there's still significant room for growth because you might look at it and say, well, there's you know seven franchisees in a certain town. Um, we might work out numbers out on the, the way that we do it, and we might say, well, there's enough room for 16, but there might be seven of our franchisees, but there might be another 20 independents. And we're focused on doing a quality job for all our clients and, and trying to move some of those independents uh, out of that market as well. So there's still significant room for growth, um, especially in Western Victoria. Well, I think at the end of the day, you have to do what you say. Always do your quotes in writing so the franchisee and the client are clear about what they're doing and whether it's edging, uh, mulching, etc. just doing those little extras. But a lot of the time, it's actually about how you communicate with the client post the job. So if you can communicate well with the client, make sure that they're happy, leave some business cards, and you want to show that, uh, that client that you're there as a manager for their entire outdoor area and not just there to mow their lawns. Great question. So no is the short answer. If you want to put on an extra trailer... Uh, or employees, uh, you're welcome to do so. We have some franchisees in my area that are running three, four trailers, uh, potentially five trailers uh, out on the road in some of the country towns. So as I touched on before, you can grow your business to be, as, it's what suits you. Now, whether that's a small to medium sized business and that's what suits you, I have people in my region that do that and they want to knock off at four o'clock and um, you know, be social with their family or go to the pub or go out and ride their motorbikes. Uh, but I have guys in my region that work from, especially over the busier period between the start of uh, daylight savings, they might work from dawn to dusk uh, six days a week uh, and they've got multiple uh, trailers out on the road. So again, it's all about personally what's right for you, but there is no additional cost to do that.